My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I'm Bill and make friends. I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and explain what the heck is happening. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. If we're in a bull market, and I think we are, you have to prepare yourself. Not for days like today where the Dow gained 369 points, S&P jumped 1.46%, and the Nasdaq pulled out of 1.67%. House of pleasure. But for days like yesterday. The house of pain. When the averages look like they're rolling over, the bears are screaming about the sky fall, and everybody's bracing themselves for a real roundhouse. We have to prepare for the down days now, because in a bull market, they're buying opportunities. They're how you get a better price on the merch, or merchandise, as they say on the trading desk. The problem is, it's hard to think that way when the market looks ugly. We're used to buying the dips and so-called selling the rips, and those days may very well be over, replaced by actual investing. We were in a bear market for roughly a year, and before that, we had a market that was somewhat pernicious, too. It was dominated by a handful of mega-cap tech names, and that was for ages. Narrow, unwieldy, and in many ways dangerous for most of the S&P 500. The mega caps carried everything on their back like giant steam trunks filled with stocks. So I think many of us have forgotten what a real bull market looks like, or they never seen it at all. You know what it looks like? It looks like today. When we see the signs of a real bull, you need to change your approach to down days like yesterday. In a bull market, they're just like the days when Jimmy Chill is in his garden deadheading, clipping the dying branches of stems, making sure there's sustenance for the real plants. Yep, yesterday was a pruning day, which meant it was the perfect time to buy the high-quality stocks that were put on sale by Wall Street's hedge trimmers. And why not? They'll grow faster, stronger, and better, just like my plants. I hope. What makes me so hopeful about this market? Well, first, there has to be a reason to be positive. Can't just be made up. Can't be chimero. We're not talking about alchemy here. This time, we don't only have to, not one reason. We got two reasons, and they're dating back to October, so the season of last year. First was the unexpected decline in the dollar, and then the equally unexpected decline in long-term interest rates. We keep finding out that these two trends have much more staying power than we ever thought. No matter what the Fed does or doesn't do or says or doesn't tomorrow even, I think that the, it will not impact long rates, just short rates. Long rates remain extremely low, which is important. Remember, that's also good compared to stocks and dividends. More on that later. As for the dollar, well, you get a strong currency if your economy's strong. And it's relatively strong versus others. Well, guess what? When you see the Eurozone having better growth than we do, as we saw this very morning, you know there's still plenty of room for the greenback to go lower. Right now, the fourth quarter earnings we're seeing are so distorted by the previously strong dollar that you think our international companies must be losing tons of business to their foreign competitors. That's what a strong currency will do to you. It gives a British outfit like Unilever a huge advantage over, say, Procter & Gamble, which, by the way, we like for the Child Trust. But the dollar hasn't been insanely strong since October. It's now way down, which is a huge positive for American businesses that operate overseas, and I'm making the claim that it's not done going yet. Meanwhile, we've recognized these two powerful trends for months, but during this time, you've been hurt severely if you listen to the bears who constantly grab the mic and warn that it's dangerous to buy stocks because the Fed wants a recession. And they'll tell you they, that they, tell, they told you so on a day like yesterday. I got my boys like, oh, look at this. They told me so. Oh, wow, scary. The rally since October has been all about the soft landing scenario playing out. It just gets broader and broader, where the Fed can beat inflation without destroying the economy, even as the myriad critics come on air and tell you the world's ending. These guys come on air and tell you that the economy's too hot and we're permanently stuck with high inflation. Or they say the Fed's going to napalm the entire economy, maintain price stability. They have been and probably will be just distractions at this point. They take your eye off the ball. Which leads me to my second observation of this market. A real bull produces a crazy pastiche, if not an amalgam, of stocks going higher. Not just the same old, same old, okay? What do I mean? Okay, housing stocks are the most sensitive to rate hikes of all sectors. They should be being clobbered, clobbered daily, taking endless amounts of pain. Of pain. But today, Pulte, giant home builder, reported this maker of mid-six-figure uh, houses delivered a perfect quarter. 
allowing stock to soar 9%. 9% in the midst of a brutal rate hike? I mean, that's insane. Just as in a bear market, when stocks do strange things like go down in good quarters, bull markets accept anomalies and exploit them. Think about it. The Fed's raising rates to cool down the economy, in part because it's worried about the sky-high price of housing. So personally, I'm praying j didn't listen to the Pulte conference call. CEO Ryan Marshall kicked it off by saying, and I quote, we ended 2022 on a high note as we closed almost 8,900 homes and delivered all-time fourth quarter records, end quote. Well, that's not what the Fed wants to hear. Now, uh, Pulte did see net new orders down 27% year over year. Marshall noted, quote, the softer demand is a result of consumers priced out of the market by higher prices and higher mortgage rates, along with those individuals who have moved to the sidelines given market uncertainties and risks. That's one for the Fed in its war against inflation. Oh, no, but go one page into Pulte's slide deck and you will see how confusingly bullish this moment is, because the company actually raised housing prices by 17 percent, all the way to 571,000 on average. Are these numbers a sign of America's great wealth? Are they telling us that when long rates leveled off at the end of last year, buyers started coming back to the housing market? Now, in a bear market, we'd be dissecting these numbers and saying they're frauds or they're crazy. Who knows? But uh, the negative interpretations, they don't, they don't cut it now. In a bull market, you know what you do? Well, you do nothing. You know, the one thing you certainly don't do is look through it. I'll tell you what you do. You buy. Remember, in bull markets, all sorts of stocks lead us higher, including ones that sometimes erupt higher for absolutely no discernible reason whatsoever. I mean, why the heck did the retailers start running today? I got no idea. That's, that's bull market behavior. They says, why, why, why is Target up? I don't know. That's bull market behavior. Then there are the autos, okay, uh, which should also be crushed and just mutilated, spindled here. One week after Tesla cuts prices to smash its competitors, GM comes out swinging with amazing numbers. Fantastic forecast. Plenty of demand for its electric vehicles. Later tonight, CEO Mary Barr will explain how it all came together. I mean, but the fact is, it's not supposed to come together at this point in the tightening cycle. It's supposed to be upside down. Can we flip this? Can we flip this and show people what it's been like? The pain, the misery. The managed care stocks exploded higher, too. Look at United Health. The semis reignited after a tepid day yesterday. Who doesn't want to see a boring company put up great numbers like A.O. Smith, a solid maker of boilers? Here comes carrier. Here comes train. That's what happens, okay, at this stage. That's what you want to be looking for. Let me give you another telltale sign of the bull market. Reversals. Intraday reversals. Get ready for them. Look at what happened to NXP Semi. The market, that, you know, that's the automaker. Uh, that They make chips for autos and, and the Internet of Things, IoT. Last night, NXP reported and some ill-advised traders dumped the stock when management said things are weak. They, and that sent the stock down seven bucks in after hours. There was no conference call until today. But when NXP finally spoke, it sounded pretty soothing and the stock actually rallied back from minus seven to finish up nearly five bucks 12 point swing just tonight amd the new semi kingpin missed on gross margins barely beat very beaten down earnings estimates have been slash 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 what happens the bear market loses 10 percent this market adds to its gains this is the kind of bull market behavior you have to get used to ups reports this morning at 6 a.m computer generated stories tell you how horrible it is big miss oh how's it stock looks down four plug ugly end of the day stocks up eight Finishes 12 point swing, not bad. Bear market goes the opposite way. Stocks open up, then get clobbered, feel humiliated. Good earnings mean nothing except price target cuts. Hedge funds come in on down days and tell you, here it comes, the big one, the mother of all bears, and all that happens is that they get that one day. So, bottom line, let's understand that these days, say, like a caterpillar reports a solid number and the stock sells off, even if it doesn't reverse today, well, then there's always tomorrow. So, don't think of betting against it. Not with billions in infrastructure sales coming their way. A sale down nine used to be a correct one when we were in Beartown. Not anymore. Hey, I, let's go to Amher in New York. Amher! Hey, Jimmy Chill. This is Amir from New York. Hi, right, the show, man. And what do you have to say? Yep. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chill, um, I watch your show uh, with my baby son. He loves your show along with me. We both Fantastic. enjoy it. And I would like to uh, get from the sound machine that you have. It would be great if you can add it on the CNBC merchandise store sometime uh, for sale. I like that. I like that. Okay. Help us um, <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so, uh, I would like to know from you if I should buy, hold, or sell this stock. My investment horizon is five to ten years. It's a digital healthcare company. Um, it's came down a lot in the last one year or so. I know you've spoken about it in the past, but I'm wondering what do you think about it uh, from a long-term future perspective? 
they have um, a wide mode because right. they have uh, they integrated with a lot of healthcare insurance companies. Okay. And okay. They have a lot of doctors on the platform. And the stock is so, stock. Teladoc, something you tweeted about last oh, night. Oh, Teladoc. Okay, so like Kathy Wood loves it. So that right now in this market, that means it goes higher. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what the what, how the company's doing. She likes it. People will see it. They'll cover their shorts. They'll get worried. It'll go higher. Let's talk about it after it goes higher. Thank you for the kind words. All right. I think many of us have forgotten what a real bull market looks like, or they've never seen one. You know what it looks like? Today. Man, money tonight. GM shot the lights out in the quarter for, and got this new lithium investment to record EV sales. Uh, to record EV sales. I got to tell you, it, it, you have to watch my interview with Mary Barra. Brilliant. She's brilliant. Hey, then we love dividend and risk and money. So tonight I'm revealing three more, and I'm sharing where I cut, they come down on them. And with Pfizer selling its COVID-19 treatment in Paxlovid in China, how can it impact the company's bottom line? Millions of doses. I'm going through the headlines with the company's top press. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.